Hello, my name is Dr. Frank Guerin, and I am very excited to meet you today and show you some basic steps about how to become a better reader. I have been the director of the Reading Enhancement Program at the United States Air Force Academy for the last 20 years, where I have had the privilege of interacting with the next generation of Air Force leaders and helping them become more efficient readers. As a 1978 graduate of the Air Force Academy, I fully understand the challenging environment at the Academy and the need of our cadets to improve their reading expertise. In our reading enhancement course, we primarily target first year students in order to help them receive the most benefit possible during their time here. We also have a healthy number of faculty and staff who take our course and demonstrate how reading improvement is a lifelong endeavor and how everyone can improve their reading skills. Quite honestly, I wish I had the additional skill sets this course provides during my cadet days and in my career in the Air Force. These lessons provide proven techniques and strategies that can be useful in many situations during all seasons of life. Taking notes is essential and something we encourage. So please take out your pen or pencil and note our first key concept. Reading is a lifelong critical skill that can be improved wherever you are by learning proven principles and practicing and applying these concepts with authentic text. With that in mind, let's introduce our reading enhancement course. You may be wondering, why do I need to improve my reading skills? There are many reasons, but specifically for college students, there are three clear realities that you will face immediately. First, the length and type of reading in college is more demanding than in high school. The average reading rate for adults is between 200 and 250 words per minute, which is fine for most reading tasks, but not for college reading. In college, it's normal to have over 100 pages of reading per night and the texts are at a higher reading level. Students respond to this by either limiting their reading or not reading at all, responses that don't lead to academic success. Fortunately, our course offers you a way to improve your reading efficiency and meet these challenges. Secondly, you are responsible for accomplishing your reading assignments and they are critical for academic success. Instructors assume you have read the material assigned for each lesson, and there's no time in class to review assigned readings. Classroom discussion and activities, including quizzes, build on the concepts introduced in the reading. Thirdly, and directly resulting from the first two points, time management is critical for academic success, and reading efficiently helps you better manage your time so that you will be able to perform effectively in whatever tasks you need to accomplish. We teach a 20 lesson half semester course to cadets, faculty and staff to improve reading efficiency. For most of us, reading instruction, learning how to read, stopped somewhere around third grade. Our program is designed to improve your reading skills to handle the challenges of higher level reading that you will encounter in college and during your career. Consistent results over 20 years with over 7,000 students indicate that our readers on average increase their reading rate by 100 to 250 percent while simultaneously increasing their reading comprehension level. Students enter our course over 260 words per minute and 87% comprehension, and finish over 820 words per minute at 91% comprehension. We also cover key techniques to help recall material that you have read and how to link this knowledge to other concepts and use this information for deeper learning both inside 
and outside the classroom. What these results indicate is a savings of time through a targeted, selective approach to reading. If you can read something in half the time it took you to read that same material before our course, you have just saved time. Time that you can use to further review the material or relate it to other fields of study or go on to your next assignment. The choice is yours. These results are impressive, but I will be very upfront with you. It doesn't come without a cost. The keys to improving your reading are, first, motivation. Secondly, dedicated and spaced practice. And thirdly, application of the key principles and techniques that you learn. This video will give you a taste of our course and how it can benefit you. Obviously, we cannot cover the entire curriculum in the length of this video, but we can give you some of the highlights of the course and open the door just a little bit to entice you to take the course. So let's get started by looking at some of the key concepts and techniques to help you to improve your reading. One of the tools we often use in the Air Force is a checklist, a method used to accurately and orderly accomplish a series of critical tasks. As a pilot in the Air Force, I used checklists constantly. We were evaluated on our flying skills, but also on our knowledge and proficiency in following a wide variety of checklists. There was an exterior checklist, an interior checklist, a before engine start checklist, an engine start checklist, and many others. These were in place to ensure that important steps were followed in preparation for a successful mission. In our course, we compare the three phases of flying, pre-flight, in-flight, and post-flight, to the three stages of reading, pre-reading, active reading, and post-reading. Each stage is important and connected with the other phases of the process. And over the next few minutes, we will cover several highlights in each of these three areas. We will stop this video at two points and provide specific instructions. Please complete these tasks before proceeding to the next section. The best place to start is at the beginning. So let's do that with our pre-reading checklist. In order to improve your reading abilities, or any skill for that matter, you need to know your current level of performance. This requires an assessment of your reading rate and comprehension. In our course, students accomplish three distinct assessments, one in print, one on the computer, and one on a machine called a visograph. Due to the time limitations of this video, you will only accomplish the first one, an assessment in print. You are welcome to accomplish the other two assessments by scheduling an appointment with us in the reading lab or contacting me directly. Before you accomplish this initial assessment, let's discuss three key techniques in pre-reading. Before you start reading, it is critical to determine your purpose, make a plan, and preview what you are about to read. First, ask yourself, why am I reading this passage? The answer, because it was assigned, may be true, but we need to be more specific. Are you reading this material for the first time or as a review? For full comprehension, or a general summary of ideas, for immediate application, or for future study or research. Your purpose will determine how you read. Secondly, have a plan for reading actively. For example, 
If the material is new or unfamiliar, make sure you understand where it fits in the big picture. Review the table of contents and chapter introduction. A basic tenet in education is that we learn by association, by comparing what we already know with what we don't know. Your plan will help you start that process and stay on task. Thirdly, preview the passage to improve your comprehension by activating your background knowledge of this information. There are five specific steps in previewing. First, note the title and author of the article. Second, read the subtitle and abstract if available. Third, read the introduction and conclusion of the article the first and last paragraphs. Fourth, read the first sentence or line of each paragraph, looking for the main idea or topic sentence. And fifth, if there are any questions at the end of the article, scan them quickly. Vocabulary plays a key part in previewing. Review the glossary of key terms in the chapter, if provided, and note the highlighted items in the passage itself. Make sure you understand these terms before you start reading. Previewing does take some time, not much, but it is a key step in improving your reading comprehension. From now on, preview everything that you read. Stop the video and take the initial assessment. Passage number one, record your rate and comprehension scores. You are welcome to schedule a Visigraph assessment in the reading lab. No, really, stop the video and take the initial assessment. Passage number one. Welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to go through the reading assessment and recording your initial rate and comprehension scores. Were you surprised at your scores? That's okay. Most of us don't know our actual reading rate and comprehension, but now you have a starting point for improvement. Let's go on to our next phase of reading, active reading. Reading is not a spectator sport you must interact with the text as you read. Have you ever read a page or two and then re realized, I don't remember a thing about what I just read? Why did that happen? Most of the time, it happened because you were not actively engaged in reading the text. Your eyes were moving across the page, but your mind wasn't actively processing the information. To remember what you read, you must actively engage with the text. We will discuss three specific techniques to help you do that. Push yourself, use a pacer, and set up a positive reading environment. First, push yourself. It may sound simplistic, but in order to understand a paragraph, you must read it completely. You need to finish it. Sometimes we get bogged down in a sentence, when the best thing to do would be to skip parts of a sentence and keep reading. The context, other sentences, often helps make sense of the material. So push yourself through the passage. Don't be satisfied with your current reading ability. Push yourself to read faster or slower and retain more information depending on your purpose. Realistically, this means setting a goal or time limit when you sit down to read. For now, try to make a rough estimate of the time it should take to read a passage and go for that. Second, use a pacer. In addition to pushing yourself to help you read actively, you need to train your eyes to fall on the page where you want them to go. 
When we read, our eye movement does not go left to right, line to line in a consistent, uniform fashion. When we read, we can go all over the page from the text to a graphic back to the beginning of a line to reread something we think we missed. It's no wonder our comprehension suffers. We can train our eyes to exactly go on the page where we want them to go by using our hand as a pacer. This means using your hand as a guide, physically placing your hand on the text and following the text above your hand with your eyes. Your eyes are drawn to motion and will follow your hand, making you a more efficient and focused reader. This may seem distracting at first, but after a few minutes, it will become second nature. The first two hand movements, hand movement number one and number two, are smooth left to right movements across the page at your current reading rate. With hand movement number one, you start at the left side of the line and proceed in a smooth fashion at your current reading rate, going to the next line, left to right. Next line, left to right. Hand movement number two is a slight modification of hand movement number one. You come in one half of an inch from each side as you read, again at your current reading rate. Coming in one half of an inch to an inch, depending on your level of comfort and the text itself, and finishing up one half of an inch to an inch from the end, going to the next line in a smooth fashion. Left to right, in half of an inch or so, next line. Your eyes will pick up the words at the beginning and the end with your peripheral vision. The first two hand movements should be used if your rate is less than 400 words per minute. Hand movement number three is used for rates above 400 words per minute and consists of vertical movement with your fingers tracking down the page. Depending on the width of the column and your level of comfort, you may use three or two or one fingers as you go vertically down the page. The places where your fingers are on the line are where your eyes stop as you read groups of words left and right of your finger. This grouping or clustering is something we practice extensively in our course. At first, hand movement number three may seem a little slower than the first two hand movements, but with practice, your rate will increase dramatically. The third step in reading actively has to do with setting up a positive reading environment. These include proper lighting, posture, and taking breaks. The best lighting is sunlight. Try to read with plenty of sunlight if you can. The worst lighting is fluorescent lighting. Using a fluorescent bulb as the only light source produces the most eye strain possible. Unfortunately, this also tends to be very common during late night study sessions. Set up better lighting conditions by reading with as much light as possible, preferably not fluorescent, with both overhead and spot lighting, floor or desk lamps, whenever you read. In order to read actively, you need to read with a good posture. The best posture for reading is standing up. If you feel tired, try reading standing up. The worst posture is lying down. Your body relaxes and your mind follows. Sitting down is fine as long as you are not too comfortable. Reading with a straight back is best. 
It's important to take regular breaks as you read to reduce eye strain and stay on task. We use the 20-20-20 rule. After reading for 20 minutes, stand up or stretch for 20 seconds and focus at least 20 feet away. This brief break will relax your eyes for continued reading. Follow this guideline from now on. Another simple step to help improve your reading efficiency is to select a non-distracting environment. For most of you, that will not be your dorm room. Try the library, a classroom, or any other location where you will not be interrupted. As an example of sunlight and reading in sunshine, Open your windows, open the drapes, bring in the sunshine, and let the light come in on your reading. It makes a world of difference. Stop the video and read passage number two. Set up a positive reading environment and read using hand movement number one or number two. Record your rate and comprehension scores. Congratulations on completing the first two stages of reading. Now you are ready to come in for a landing. This is a very critical phase of flying and reading. You're not done yet. The third phase, post-reading, addresses what to do after you finish reading the text. These strategies help you better remember the material and connect this knowledge and other concepts for deeper learning. In our course, we cover these techniques in more detail and practice them with a variety of readings. In this segment, we will give you some examples of these strategies and encourage you to investigate them more in our course. Concept maps are visual summaries of the main points of what you have read and can be created in a variety of formats. Here's an example of a concept map of the three phases of reading that we have been discussing. We have talked about pre-reading, active reading, and post-reading. and we can make links among the various main points of our discussion or what we have read, and we can add additional links and concepts as we like. Mnemonics are memory devices that are extremely helpful methods to help categorize and recall key concepts. With this method, you list the key points of the section you have read and create an acronym or an acrostic of the first letter of each point. Common examples of acronyms are SCUBA, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, or RADAR, radio detection and ranging. After we read, we can list the main points of a section and create an acronym to help us remember them. An example of an acrostic is one we use to remember the order of the planets. My very energetic mother just served us nine pizzas. The acrostic that you come up with, the poem, correlates to the information that you remember from what you have read. A powerful memory device. Concept maps and mnemonics are techniques that help you recall key material from your reading and connect this material to other learning. Use them to help you successfully complete your mission of reading more effectively. 
I teach cadets to better understand the techs that they're engaging with. We have several techniques to allow them to view reading as a layered process instead of just an end goal. Uh, in addition to items that we do before and during the reading, we also have some techniques that help students after they're done. Specifically, we try to get them to consider what they've just engaged with and through a better understanding of their modes of understanding or modes of learning and through such practices as concept mapping and also summarizing, they're able to better align, understand, and then use what they've learned. Some of the most important things I've learned in the reading course are how to read faster, especially when it comes to academic reading, because before I took the class, I was pretty slow when it came to reading books and other stuff and trying to really take everything in. But then after the class, I learned to read a lot faster and I cut down the time it takes for homework to be completed. Some of the main things I learned in the reading enhancement course were to use a pacer, such as my finger, to go down the page, look at the center of every line, and read the words on either side of the line with just that one look to skim ahead of reading so I knew what was happening in the passage and to scan as I went so that my speed increased a lot. Reading is a process by which we acquire knowledge, we practice, and then we enhance a skill. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes approximately 20 lessons to see a significant difference. And that's why we continue to motivate and to produce material for our cadets to learn each lesson. The course is sequential. You start with small passages and then you move on to reading a whole book in one lesson. And the reading course will always be part of my everyday reading habits. I use it to pick out details um, and knowledge when I read my school books and to just get the general idea and feel of the leisure books that I'm reading. Some of the most important things I've learned in the Reading Enhancement course are that reading is a skill which you can practice and develop over time, and also how to read different types of material. For example, you would read a leisure book differently than you might read your calculus textbook, and it teaches you how to deal with these different situations. After going through this course, I see now that my reading enhan enhancement has increased significantly, and uh, it has also improved my time on the daily because I'm able to read faster and do my assignments a lot quicker. The whole course overall helped me become a better reader and helped me comprehend more. And the class, by the end of it, my reading speed had almost tripled. I use the same techniques I teach to the students continuously. I preview to decide whether I'm going to commit to a work. At the end, I concept map to help me align ideas, and I teach these same techniques to my children because I want them to grow up as lifelong readers. Reading changes lives. It broadens our perspective, it sharpens our minds, and it feeds our passion. You open up a book, and it's an adventure. You may visit places you've never seen or you may never see times in the past or the future. I encourage everyone to open up a book and enjoy the adventure. Reading is essential to your academic success and also provides a doorway to self-improvement and future learning. You can take positive steps to become a better reader and open up a whole new world that is waiting for you to explore. It's as close as the nearest book. It has been said that you are the same person today that you will be a year from now, except for the people you meet and the books you read. We encourage you to do both. We hope that you have enjoyed this introduction to our program and look forward to helping you further improve your reading skills by taking our full course. Let us know how we can help you and remember, you are responsible for your reading success. Happy reading.